The UK GDP for the second quarter came in this morning at 0.9%, slightly exceeding market expectations. As well as this, the year-on-year -year figures revealed a 3.2% expansion in the UK economy. In order to discuss these positive figures and the UK at large, I am joined by Neil Staines at the ECU Group in London. Welcome, Neil. What are your thoughts on the UK figures released this morning? Well, I think, you know, they, they continue to show that the UK economy is strong from an economic perspective. You know, slight upward revision, some decent business investment data in there too. And I think the composition of the growth in the UK is becoming slightly more broad. And I think that's certainly positive for the UK going forward. So overall, I think, you know, we're fairly positive. There's a uh, slight cautionary note about a potential dip in uh, in sentiment surrounding um, the Scottish referendum vote in September, so what potential impact that could have on Q3, and that the, the Bank of England have cautioned ahead that uh, growth momentum may slow into Q4, but certainly as far as we are now, uh, very positive about the UK's GDP performance. What is Britain's position in the EU, and what is your outlook? Um, I think from an economic standpoint, the UK economy is actually doing very well. I think it's very strong. I think as we touched on it, it's a broadening recovery and it's not, you know, at the start of this year we were uh, debating the fact that the, the economic recovery was too heavily reliant on the consumer. And whilst we, ECU, were very positive on the prospect for a business investment-led recovery in the second half, that wasn't necessarily the accepted norm from the broader market. And so, you know, that the, the recovery has broadened in terms of the contributors to, to GDP in the UK. And I think that leaves the UK and uh, sterling from a currency perspective in a very strong position. And, and you know, in regard to the EU is, is where, you know, the concerns about the UK as, as an investment location and the UK as sterling as a currency, now we see as a very strong economic backdrop, rely heavily on what is going on against a, a political backdrop. We've got one of the uncertainties out of the way with the Scottish referendum, although, you know, with the general election coming up in May and this question mark around uh, the EU, although that said, uh, the, um, a recent uh, manufacturing survey suggested that 85% of their members would vote to remain within the EU, so when we come down to it, if there is a vote, whilst that vote itself contains uncertainty, I'm not entirely sure that the, the, call, the vote would be quite as close as, as perhaps some may be concerned over. But ultimately, there is a, a modicum, if you like, of political risk surrounding the UK and surrounding the, um, the general election and surrounding the membership of the EU. But ultimately, we're very, very positive, all things economic in the UK. And uh, I think that benefits UK assets and sterling in particular. So you don't see the UK separating from the EU to be a real threat? It's slightly more of a political question to ask about whether it would be bad. Uh, for the UK, if we left, ultimately, I think that there will be some concern as there is with any vote. But I think that at this stage, with the anecdotal and the broader evidence that we have, would suggest that it would be a fairly consistent, positive vote to remain in the EU. I think there's a lot of political pressure for um, Cameron, should he uh, be successful in the next general election, to renegotiate ahead of the EU referendum. And I think that that will... Uh, any successes there will, uh, will just add to that percentage wishing to remain within the EU. Thank you for joining us, Neil. That's all on the UK for today. Check back on Thursday for the ECP Governing Council meeting. Goodbye.